In this segment of the bullet writing class, we will cover some items to remember and errors to avoid to ensure you are successfully highlighting your airman's accomplishments. The goal of this segment is to emphasize the importance of knowing the form you are using and some editing techniques. One of the other things that you need to know about when you're getting started is you have to know which form you're using and what is required on that form. If you're writing an awards package and it's for an annual award, it's important to know what those headings are and also what's the minimum amount of bullets that you want on that form. On your EPRs, it's great because each section will tell you exactly what's supposed to be on there and so they really made it easy for you. But this is also an easy way to get things kicked back if you don't follow the correct, correct procedures. And then editing. You want to read this read it again and then guess what read it again and even maybe give someone else to read it right we have somebody else look at it with a fresh set of eyes maybe they have other opportunities where they have um, been able to go through different EPRs or 1206s and they can give you that feedback one of the tricks that I've learned is that you read it backwards and so it tricks your brain into thinking it's reading a new document and as always go back to your resources you have the tongue and quill you have this writing guide feel free to use those um, in order to make sure that you're catching any of those other errors that might get it kicked back. And when you're writing, it's very important to think about how are you catching that reader's attention. If this is an awards package and you have one of these units that has great people all around it, they may not have a whole lot of time to look through those packages. And so you want to catch that reader's attention, the most important and impactful bullets up top, and then as it goes down, it breaks down into the various levels and also using positive words and phrases. Later on in a couple of examples, we can talk about what makes it a positive phrase, but when a reader reads it and they feel good about it, it makes it more impactful. Just a few errors to avoid when we're going over it is that we're not embellishing. This is where we're sticking to those core values and we're looking back on what integrity really means. You gotta do it on paper. If you're walking the walk, you're talking the talk. Also that it's not too long and it's to the point, keeping it down to one line, fitting all of that information that you can in there. And that it's not too vague. You know, I've seen a, a bullet where it says, you know, great mentor, loves their airmen. Like that was a bullet that you're submitting? Like that's, that is not telling us any information about what this airman did or why they care about them or what they're doing to mentor them. And it's really about those tangible items. And then for this particular one, we're gonna do the three BART bullet. And that's when we're looking at the action, impact, and result. And we'll break that down here for you. And again, the improperly categorized, making sure that it matches what's going on in that form. So let's extract the facts. So we're gathering up all that information, using what's ever available for you. What's one of the tools we talked about? My vector. My vector, that's right. Using it, you're able to get it in a PDF, and you've got it all from the subordinate. They're able to help you. And as you're gathering it, you want to collect it. Collect it all. Don't throw or discard anything out. You never know, especially with our drill status guardsmen when we're looking at a two-year time period or maybe a deployment or an exercise or something that they're going on. It all sits there and fits into that big picture. So we want to grab all those pieces. You may have even on the active duty component where you're being fapped out to help out in another organization. You get a Form 77, plop that in there and make sure that it doesn't get lost as well. And so we want to consider how that we're gathering all this information. Um, and then as we're writing it, we want to make sure that we are using each bullet is for a specific action and specific information, right? We want to go in and that uh, each one has its own timeline that's going across. We're using these action verbs. When we go through some of our scenarios, it's really important to pay attention to the rank that's in these scenarios. Because if we're talking about that individual and we're trying to highlight their accomplishments, what does the little brown book tell us that that airman should be doing? And are we writing to that level to really highlight their accomplishments? And then linking it all together always thinking about the big picture. When we look at what our Air National Guard, Air Force Reserves, and active duty need from us, is our everyday finance individual understanding how they're impacting it, other than if you don't pay me, I get mad at you, <laughs> right? Or if you lose my shot record in the medical field, you know, I'm big trouble. No, there's mission readiness and accomplishments that are attached to everything that we do. So again, back to how is it useful? You may not see it at that moment. But we've had a situation where we had an airman who was able to find a way to save 20 minutes of a maintainer's time by turning a wrench in a different direction. 
and no, I'm not talking lefty loosey righty tidy. It was actually the way the series went. It still fell in line with the TO. They weren't violating any safety requirements, but their innovative thinking said, hey, if I do it this way, I get 20 minutes of my life back. And to that airman, that's significant. And if you think about the airmen that touch each and every aircraft. Yeah, and that does the same job. Exactly. And they, I mean, you, you help the wing. Well, if you stop there with that information, that's great for that wing. But what happens if that chief is at a meeting with other chiefs and says, hey, my guy did this. Did you hear about this? And now you can take that into the big Air Force, it's benchmark. And so that impact, that big picture, really can be shown to affect the entire uh, organization. And that's what our leadership is calling us to do. Find innovative ways. You highlight what that airman's doing, and now your other airmen are going, wait a minute, I can do this too. Wait a minute, my leadership believes in what we think and what my innovations are. I should bring this up to them. It opens up those doors for communications. So it's not just about that one airman, it's embracing it overall as the Air Force goes through. So step two, when we're accomplishing our impact, is going through and actually constructing the bullet in itself. And so we'll have our little ground rules here. We have our dash up front, our semicolon and double dash there in the middle, dividing up our three parts. And then, of course, we're not using ending punctuation. And why aren't we using ending punctuation? Because it's not a full sentence. It's not a sentence. Why are we not using pronouns? Because it's not a sentence. It's not a sentence. And why are we not using the individual's name? Because it's not a sentence. It's not a sentence. And it it's should all, be it's on, the form. on the form. That's right. Hopefully it's up there up top. Otherwise, you are going to get that kicked back. And that goes back to the editing phase, right? So here we go. We've got our action impact and result. That is how we're gonna build this accomplishment impact statement. That's the three parts that we talked about before. You have your internal punctuation. So you wanna start with the action verb. It's kind of the easy game point of where we're going. And we've given you some examples there in your writing guide to use to get you started. The key thing about these action verbs is please make sure you know what they mean. <laughs> it's very difficult uh, when you have a situation where someone's used a word and you go, I don't think that's what they meant. And you see it and it becomes a distraction. You're like, okay, that's not what it meant. And then it kind of takes away from the rest of the form. So action verbs are very important in one, setting the tone for that bullet, and two, making sure that it actually means what you want it to mean. So for our example, we processed over 300 mobility records with no errors as part of the 81st Air Base Wing ORE. Very simple, can you tell what they did? They processed over 300 mobility records. So you have a very clean way of uh, kicking off this, um, this action statement. Uh, another thing that you can do is if you have something and you're really wanting to bring in that airman's personality to kind of make it stand out, we can add an adverb in there. And so when we look at it, now they've tenaciously processed. I like it. You like it? Yeah, D. Wills likes it. So you tenaciously processed over 300 mobility records. You kind of look at that and you go, okay, didn't we talk about not embellishing earlier today? So maybe tenaciously isn't the best word for this type of bullet, but it just is an example to give you kind of that idea of, please use the list that's in here and think about how you're highlighting those things. And then the next step is gonna be our impact element. And this classifies how and it, the or, it affects the organization. They did this and so here's your immediate uh, impact on what has happened. And it also sets a tone for at what level that's going to be. You know, if they do this, then it goes here, then it goes here. And it's all building up these baby steps. I like to call this our result light. We go in and we show what the immediate impact is. So here we have our action and then all unit personnel met their scheduled chalk times. And anybody who's been through an inspection understands how important that is. Those error-free records, they move on, they move on. The second they start following, you know, finding errors, it slows down, you miss chalk times, and then you are scheduling your life six months out going, oh look, we get more practice. The whole deployment line's thrown off. All of it, it's gone, it is, it is. And so here we can show that all unit personnel met their scheduled chalk times, not only highlighting the accomplishment of what the action did, but that the impact was there at that unit. So now that we have our action and our impact, we need to talk about the result. What was that big picture outcome of what the airmen did? And we want to think big, big picture on this, right? So we're going to look at 
paramount to the unit achieving a highly effective IG rating. We know this because we've been through our experience where it shows that we process records, we meet scheduled chalk times, and it can really affect that grade on the outside. And so here, highly effective IG rating is going to be that outcome. Can we tell like what level of impact this was and why? I think we can. How's that? Because uh, something like an a, um, exercise of that magnitude uh, highly effective is one of the highest ratings you can get mm -hmm. and that rating is probably going to affect the whole wing depending on if this is a wing exercise. Very much so. It, it directly can, especially with it being an IG setting. Absolutely. So we saw that it all, all in one piece. Is that all going to fit on one line? No. So this is where we look at streamlining that bullet and we're going to use the acronym ABS. Just like in fitness, we got to make sure that those are nice and tight. We're going to go in here and look at being accurate, brief, and specific. By being accurate, we're making sure, again, we're not embellishing. Going back to our core values, making sure that we're being honest. Not everybody's that firewall five and walking on water like we used to see. You're going to have the information just has to stick to the facts. And that's where we go in with being accurate. And then we have being brief or brevity. And ironically, this has a longer definition, but it goes into the specifics on what does that mean? Again, why are we taking out those pronouns and those extra words? Because it's not a sentence. And so it's keeping the facts in. Uh, we talk about making sure that we're having very quantitative and qualitative information within a short period of time. And by replacing those long words like automobile and changing it to a car, you've gained so many characters back to be able to really highlight the accomplishment. And then of course, being specific. We wanna make sure we have those detailed facts and numbers. You'll remember from our previous example, what did it say? Uh, I think it was talking about the like the number of records, how was it described? Over 300. Yeah. Over 300, yeah. The over 300, and what can over 300 mean? It can be 301, 356. Or 500. <laughs> 500, right? That's still over 300. <laughs> exactly. And so we want to make sure that we're being uh, very specific. So here we did 342 error-free mobility records during the 81st Air Base Wing ORE. It gives us a tangible number. It doesn't leave us with that guessing or kind of almost the fluff that says, well, it's over 300. I mean, what could that mean? And so you're going in there. And again, and then it said here, what did it say here? Do you remember? Oh, you all unit personnel, still all, you know, all, but here you have 100%. If you think back to your school days where it said, you know, minus zero wrong or 100%, like which one made you feel better about yourself? 100. 100, I got 100, I'm awesome, right? So here you're showing that positive, uh, you know, attitude behind what the words are reflecting. Now, is this all gonna fit on one line? No. Not at all. Not even a little bit. So let's see, do I get to keep my tenaciously? No, mm. probably, probably <laughs> gonna go away. You think so, all right. Feels so let's though. use our ABS all over again. But what other things that we can do uh, when we're looking at streamlining our bullets that we use a lot of in the Air Force? Acronyms, you mm -hmm. can abbreviate. Right, and so some key things that we can do to kind of make this here. So we have what the first version and now here. It still says the information, process 342 error-free records at the 81st Air Base Wing ORE. 100% personnel met chalk times and rated highly effective. And this is an appropriate IG rating, and so you can leave it like that. And the reader knows because you're looking at higher level officials who know that is an IG rating. And so they're gonna understand that that is a big wing impact there. Plus it says 81st Airborne, uh, Airborne uh, Air Base Wing. And then you see some of the areas where we've gone in, we've taken out vowels to make abbreviations, or we've left other areas in here. And again, in your uh, writing guide, you will have a list of Air Force and Tongue and Quill approved abbreviations to use. All right, so everybody ready to do it on their own? Yes, ma'am. I won't throw you to the wolves too much. <laughs> we'll go ahead and do this one together. So take a moment to read over this, and we'll highlight some of Master Sergeant Taylor's uh, accomplishments.